This is rowdy, right? Or is this rowdy? No, that's that's a clown bike. Right, bike this is rowdy. That's what I said to the right. And, yeah, yeah, this one here with the orange face, that's just called a clown. Because I always think of this one as a burglar. Is well, clown, no, but Mangles from Coney Island, who made these yeah. in the catalog, he refers to that as the rowdy target. Yeah. He refers to this one as the clown. His business was in Brooklyn, basically at Coney Island, yeah. and he was the largest manufacturer of this stuff, of the Coney Island type material. And, and you see the mangles, the more common mangle stuff, you see it, that's the most frequent stuff that you see. Mm -hmm. The Parker stuff, the Wharfline stuff, the Dickman stuff, most of which, the known stuff, we own it. Yeah. You know, and it's... Parker talked about he was the largest manufacturer of amusement material. And in the photographs, you know, we talked about these massive warehouses, multi store And you say, where did all that stuff disappear to if he really made all that stuff that he claims to have made? Yeah. Didn't he advertise galleries, like a complete gallery? Has there been any of those right. documented galleries. photographed? Or are there any there are period no, photos? No, never seen any. <laughs> you know, you see well, one. And in the catalogs, the only catalogs that you see of actual galleries will be, there's a couple of Dick, Dickman actual photographs of his galleries, and I think Chicago manufacturers. But other than that, we're fine. There's no surviving stuff. No there are no... Uh, I don't think there's any survive. Yeah, there are probably some surviving Mangles photographs because there are s several surviving Mangles galleries that are still that are still working. What was uh, the one in that mansion? Was it Mangles that had? The that was Doris Duke. That was a right. Mangles gallery. Mangles gallery. Yeah. Um, so. um, um, R. J. Reynolds, who was in Winston Salem, he owned a, his kind of his estate was called Ronalda. R e y n o l d a, and down in the basement they had this long, kind of like closet. And you open the door, and at the back of it there was a really small Mangles gallery, and they didn't even know what they had. Mm -hmm. We just stumbled upon it, going there and visiting. Doing the tour. And I gave them some information, sent them some information on it. So which one did, is it that you found the uh, period fixtures for? For both. Both of them. Oh, okay. Right. And I think the sensor probably was somewhere like in the mouth. Yeah. And that then the the, the, the bulbs eyes. then flashed yeah. intermittently. So where were they? Were they behind this metal plate? So they were inside. Shot? They were inside the box. So they couldn't be shot, obviously. Right. Okay. Because I see a metal plate that kind of comes partway right. down, yet light could still come through. Right. So you found the porcelain sockets that are of the period. This one had the sockets. Oh, this so one you did not. So I knew what to look for, and I took exact measurements of the sockets. Yeah. And then went on eBay and just hunted and hunted and hunted. And then I said, I want to see if we can find period bulbs. And I knew he, in his catalog he talked about they were red and green. I think red oh. and green. Uh -huh. So I found the we found the bulbs, and they're in here in yep. the period little cardboard cartons. And the box on this one is uh, later, right? The can? The boxes are both. Are they both period? They're both period. Oh, okay. This, this was the, the cover. Oh, just the cover. We, we had this cover. The guy who made all of our bases. Found this one in Yakima, Washington. This one came from, I think it came from New York. Manhattan. When we say found it, uh, like at auction or no, no, private, or just private. Uh, uh, yeah. And how many of these are out there? Unique, unique. Maybe five or six of those, but none of them are like that. Yeah. We and we bought this one together with the two, oh. two of the four. Um, Card suits. Card suits. Yeah. We knew so. I knew a couple that were in Minnesota, and they used to come down to Texas and do um, a show in Fort Worth. And so we got to know them, and they were primarily textile dealers. And we ran into her 
ran into her standing in line in New Hampshire in the August shows one summer. And we said, I said, Linda, do you have anything that Valerie and I would be interested in? She said, yeah, we found a pretty neat target. Uh, it's a, a like it's a, it's like a, yeah, it's like a clown with a mask and he's got like this stocking cap. And uh, I said, well, we'd really like to see it. And they said, well, we'll put it under our table at our booth and if you'll come by first thing in the morning, we'll show it to you. And I said, well, does it have a neat surface on it? He yeah. says, yeah, I don't think you'd be disappointed. <laughs> well, we not. went over there and that was the first we ran in and went to their booth and he pulled up the kind of the tablecloth of the curtain and he pulled these three pieces out yeah. and Valerie and I almost fainted and <laughs> fell on the floor. And we bought them instantaneously. Right. And as we're carrying the pieces out of their booth, I had three or four dealers try to buy them from me. Yeah. Yeah. And I said, where did you guys find this Dickman clown? And they said, well, you won't believe it, but we found it in Wichita Falls, Texas, which was like... 100 the, miles from you? Less than 100. Yeah, about 100 miles from us. As soon as we got home, we got in the car, <laughs> and we drove up to Wichita Falls, which is kind of northwest of Fort Worth. And, um, and we started driving yeah, around the town, <laughs> trying to figure out where did this could have possibly. No lead at and all. They wouldn't. They didn't tell us. I don't guess yeah. we asked. Yeah. Where did you find it? But we felt if there's if this is there, maybe there's some other stuff there. We never we did put it all even together. get out. We never even got a hint of anything else that was there. But they found and these three pieces were together, and it's obvious that they were all together on a gallery. Which one was it? that you had known about for a long time and, and this one. Just and you said each of these are like the only one known so far? They're there unique. Is, uh, they're in the catalog though, I guess. They're in the catalog. They're artist renderings. They are not original photographs. Yeah, yeah. Most of this stuff that you see, virtually all of this stuff that you see in catalogs are all artist renderings. They are not real photographs of the pieces, mm -hmm. other than a, like uh, Dickman and a couple of the other manufacturers, they will, have, they will have actual photographs of an operating gallery. Anyway, this book is called American Vernacular by Frank Moresca and Roger yeah. Rico, and here it is, here's the piece yeah, in the book. Yeah, shot of it while we were talking. And we... That's this target too. That's that's this exact target. Yeah. And we've been trying to find this target for like 20 years or more because we thought it was so beautiful. If you'd seen it here. Right? And nobody that we talked to either knew where it was or would ever tell us where it was. And then one day out of the blue, I got a phone call from a folk art dealer, a very well-known folk art dealer, who I knew his name, but did, had never done any business with him. And he said that he had a client who owned a kind of a clown with a stocking cap and a pair of spectacles <laughs> that he wanted to sell and he had called a friend of his who lived in the area who was a folk art collector and said, you know, I don't know anything about this material. Do you know someone I could call who could give me some information about, you know, somebody who might be a buyer and what the value would be, etc. And he right. said, he gave me your name, said you were the guy I needed to talk to. So as soon as he started describing the piece, I knew it was the piece that was here in the book, and I said, do you have a photograph you can send me? He says, yeah, I'll email you a photo here in a few minutes. So sure enough, it was this piece, and within a couple of days, I was on a plane to Seattle to look at it. I kind yeah. of we committed to buy it, subject to seeing it. And when you look at the piece, every little ding Right. That you see in the book, you see here. Yep. And there's so it's like the little nose, you'll see a little ding there on the so the piece is absolutely exactly like it was as it was photographed in the book. Yep. This is one of the two books they did on folk art. Yeah. And this one dates to uh, two thousand and two. Uh -huh. And we bought the piece in about subsequent to doing our book. This piece is a featured piece. Yeah. Yeah, so that we didn't have this, and we didn't know where it was, so we couldn't photograph it. But yeah. we didn't have, we didn't have a permission to use the picture that was in the book. Oh, so this one's not in. This one's in. Yeah, this we one's here, but, but we I couldn't mean, put it in our book. Here, and then, interestingly enough, the same book 
um, the American vernacular from 2002. The cowboy, the cowboy is in this book as well. And it's the same model, you're the same target? Same thing. exact target. Yeah. Now what's interesting about this, when they photographed it, the negative was flipped. Uh, and so the, 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 the bullseye is shown on the cowboy's right on this proper on right. Right when it's actually on the left. Mm -hmm. It's actually on the left. Yeah. In his chest. You, know, you have to wonder a little bit how you know, these things got scrapped for the war. You know. Oh well, let's see. That's you the know, thing. And, and that's the thing. And in the inventory that I've done for you, one of the things that they speculate about the reason this material is so rare yeah. is that it started being produced before World War One, oh. and it extended to World War Two. Yeah. And as people's lifestyles changed and so forth, a lot of this material was melted down to make military. Sure material for for the war, right, World right. War One and World War II and it just disappeared. Yep. And even though it's cast iron, the stuff is fragile. Cast iron is fragile. It's, it's brittle. I know it. It's brittle. Yeah. And so, you know, this stuff and the a lot of these galleries were not stationary. A lot of the mangle stuff was stationary. They built a big gallery, they put it in a in a you know, in a saloon. Yeah. somewhere in a back room and you'd go back there and, yeah, exactly. and you'd stand yeah. and you'd shoot at this stuff. But a lot of this material was on um, on traveling galleries right. in the back of like a flatbed trailer or a pickup truck or that kind of thing. Very, very few of these pieces do you say are in original surface Yeah, because the carnies repainted this stuff maybe yeah. two or three times a season. As nice as this one is, it looks we, like we think two that years. we think that may be original surface. Yeah. We think this is original surface. We think this is original surface. And in our book, when we refer to something in original surface, we're fairly confident that that's what it is. Yeah. Old, original that it's the original paint. It was not repainted. Oh, even by the uh, even by in the day. So in the day. day. I mean, some of this you can see there's some overtones of. Yep. Red on top of blue. Two types of green or yeah. blue and green. Yeah. But for the most part, you'd say this stuff is probably pretty close to be And even here, paint. look at the look at the, the kind of the rose or kind yeah. of red paint yep. and compare it to what's over here, Dirk. It's pretty darn close, if not the same. Well, anyhow, the ears are welded. They're, they're cast or they're sheet, you know, sheet iron put together. That's right. So they're attached separately. But these are applied. The yeah. nose was applied. The hat was applied. The collar was applied. Yep. The boxes were attached. And, and so much of this attached. material, including the mangles material, not these pieces, are one dimensional. They're just flat iron, like the like the the uh, card suits. Uh -huh. Whereas interesting how they did like some. That's not yeah. cast, is it? Is that bead? No, welding? it's like bead welding. I yeah. Guess. They put on some the, bead detail. The cast, the cast parts are the are the bullseyes. Yeah. But yeah. what's interesting about it, when you if you ever see one of these cowboys, uh, the spurs, the the rowels are great. usually missing. I just noticed that. Yeah. yeah, or you'll see a holster, the gun holsters knocked off. Yeah, been off damaged or something, and that one's almost a hundred percent. Yeah, one there. One of those rowels has got a lot of uh, good serration left. This is mangles. That is mangles. Yeah. What was the period of these? Of this one, do you know? It's probably that one probably dates to maybe the twenties. How many of those have you seen? Uh, probably five, half a dozen of them. Yeah. There's a about a year ago, two pair ah. showed up. We <laughs> knew about one of the pairs. We didn't know about the other pair. Huh. What kind of gun was used? It was a little lead. It was just lead projectiles, wasn't it? 20, 22 caliber rifles, and they used what they call shorts. Uh, the story behind the banners, back, and so they're all original. Uh, they're pan painted, supposedly like by an itinerant black man who lived in Pittsburgh, who painted these supposedly for like a carnival or a side shows or whatever. Mm -hmm. And um, we've probably owned these for. 15 years or so, you know, the, the large carnival sideshow arcade banners, you know, are, are pretty... They're almost too big to enjoy. They're too big, they're big, and they're, they're, there are a lot of them out there. Yeah. A lot of them out there. I've never seen 
or heard anybody's ever seen anything, these small ones yeah. like this. They were already mounted like this when we bought them. They almost could be kind of like a salesman sample too. That right. Somebody wanted to display their artistry and said, I can make you banners for your carnivals, for your sideshows, whatever. Here's Let me show you some of my handiwork. But uh, these are quiet. pretty common themes. You've got the miniature, right. you know, the miniature uh, man that says 29 inches in height. You have the fat lady, Jolly Ollie, and the Siamese twins. And these were pretty common, yeah. common type of sideshow attractions uh, of, in the day. So these are, so these went, these like this would have had. This it actually rotates. Oh, oh, so it moved while. It moved, which made it more difficult. Yeah. More difficult to shoot the pipes, to hit the pipes. Right. And it also there's a clanger. If you did get to back here when you between behind the um, yep. behind the bullseye. Yeah. And this is a very unique construction for a Mangles piece. It's three dimensional, whereas most of his targets were one dimensional, as we talked about upstairs. Yeah. Real flat. We found this piece in Atlanta, um, probably back in the 90s, and a friend of mine, ours, lived in Atlanta at the time, in the Atlanta area, and Valerie wanted to buy me something as a birthday present, and he told her about this piece, mm -hmm. and she said, well, just go buy it for Richard, and so he bought it for me. We subsequently discovered it was Mangles. It's not signed, but because of the catalogs, it's oh. kind of a centerpiece in a Mangles gallery because how gallery. big it is. Yeah. In a Mangles okay. gallery. Yeah. And then somewhere I read, I think maybe in one of his catalogs, it talked about the clay pipes, and it may even have said that they were orange and white. That's where we came up with the oh, colors. Oh yeah. So at the time. <laughs> <laughs> I was involved with the what used to be called the Fort Worth Art Museum that's now called the Modern Art Museum of Fort Worth. Mm -hmm. And I went to one of their installation or installation guys there who we knew and who'd done a bunch of framing for us and installation of things in our home. And I asked Tony, his name was Tony Wright, and I said, Tony, could you make me could you make me some pipes? so that we can complete the piece, much like we completed the rowdy target and the clown target by putting the bulbs and the yeah. and the receptacles in the, in the mechanical box. Yeah. So I gave him a, 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 a Mangles cast iron pipe and he made a mold. Mm -hmm. And he made the pipes for us and painted them for us. Yeah. And they clip on in the back, it's very yeah, easy. It's They're spring loaded, pre -loaded iron clips. Apparatus. It's and like you a, just basically, yeah, you just pinch them. It's like an iron clothespin. That's exactly right. <laughs> and uh, so it made it very attractive and made it authentic. The piece is 100% original. It's in mint condition. Uh, it's extremely heavy. You can see how... Yeah, what a formidable base. Yeah, what a for and I think he made the base form. And the, how are the galleries uh, driven, motorized, powered? Well, that's a good question. I don't know. Um, I don't know how that happened. I, I'm looking on the back here. Yeah, probably. Um, you can see. You can see a set screw back here. Yeah, it was probably on a shaft that had a gear or some chain probably. or something. Yeah. Yeah. Because so, they took it off to move them. So anyway, it's a. It's all. It's the only one of these that we've ever seen or even known. Oh, anything. really? Yeah. Uh, I mean, that's like most of the stuff in this book. Yeah. Now, is this the stuff is either very rare, only known piece, or you know, very few? Because that's the that was one of the purposes of the book, as you know, was to put to do a book that had the rarest and most beguiling and <laughs> attractive pieces in it. We weren't interested in just doing something that had the little the ducks and the birds and right. stuff that everybody has seen. Yeah. This is the kind of thing that nobody's seen before. It looks. It looks like they, one, they were like one off, partly at least. They were they were riveted and uh, hand riveted, you know, the, irregularly. They're not a they're I mean, mass produced, but just barely. Yeah, I mean this is this is cast iron, and yep. I mean this is probably it's sheet made iron. By hand. But it's all you know, it's all hand fabricated, and you've yep. got these early springs, and they all work. It's all operational. Yep. Well, back in this room where Valerie is, 
<laughs> which, which, where you call it? Wait a minute. What's the evening of noting? I have a phone call. Out? Found out about the the C.W. Parker owl. Yeah. And it's, I guess, one of our favorite pieces just because the owl form is a rather ubiquitous form in various shooting galleries, mm -hmm. just like cats and um, got a whole deer and, and, you know, kind of wild animals and and uh, discs. We, well, here's a pipe, pipes yeah. here and, and things like the Indian and uh, this is called the baby snookum, so <laughs> you're, you're shooting at a baby. And I found out about the, 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 the Parker owl and the way Parker, Parker's pieces were extremely um, elaborately designed and they all were meant to um, be action driven. They weren't yeah. just static targets. They did something. They either were on a conveyor belt and they moved or things like the owl. Articulated you, somehow. Yeah, you hit the bullseye and the wings actually flap. <laughs> yeah. Um, and the face, I mean, it's just such a compelling, kind of a haunting <laughs> look with those eyes, those bug eyes. Of a, it yeah. almost looks you can, you can uh, uh, envision, imagine this owl you know, in flight. Yeah. Have you seen one before or since? Well, there's a couple of others, but none of them are as in good a condition. Yeah. This has one little notch yeah. out of one it's little It's kind of one. a casting flaw, really. Well, yeah, maybe like not. The, no, I think it is a break. You're right. Okay. But, I mean, it's still, you know, and with most of Parker's stuff, for whatever reason, Parker material, if you find it, um, and there's a lot that's going to be in your sale, they generally are not painted. They all have the same kind of metallurgic composition. They have the same kind of dark gray, black so kind of patina to them. Yeah. This piece looks like it was, you know, at least maybe painted yeah. at one time. Uh, but you can see how how detailed, which is so typical of Parker. And yeah. He he and Worfline. There's one little another spot here. Um, but Worfline and Parker basically got their influence from the European target makers. Oh. And the European target makers, like that drummer girl upstairs, yeah. they were heavily mechanized and they did all kinds of things when you hit bullseyes. And so Parker and Worfline, basically, that was their starting point being influenced by the European target makers. I wonder how he even got how Parker got started. He wasn't from Europe. He didn't he didn't immigrate here. No, well, you know, I don't know what his what his background was, but it's it's obvious that because of the way they the highly detailed and uh, mechanized, mechanized yeah. and the mechanisms they used, they weren't interested in just doing standalone yeah. targets that didn't do much. They wanted to do something that really. Um, captivated the, the shooter. A little extra. Yeah. Because yeah, the number of those targets upstairs are, are have a drop down piece or somehow hinged or articulated meet with the sheet iron. That, that's a worth line piece and he um, he did a lot of kind of this funky kind of um, painted uh, man yeah. uh, to where they drop down, you hit the button and the, the, this would fall down and then it would pop back up. Yeah. Uh, huh. And so we found these in New Hampshire at the August shows, and there was a couple that are, were folk art dealers who lived out on Long Island, and they had them. Yeah. And we walked up and saw them, and they start with one, two, three, four, yeah. five, and six, and um, we think that uh, in part they're hand painted on. I don't know if that's canvas, dirk, or if that's yeah. I can't remember. I think it's a cloth. painter's painter's cloth. But obviously, they're like trade cards. You know, sometimes a trade card is just a picture of a pretty lady, and it might have it might be whiskey or it might be thread. Or, yeah, that's an exaggeration. But obviously, there's these would then add. You know, right. You know, I mean, just these stock. Are, I guess would you agree with me? These are probably like salesman samples. Yeah. You'd come into their workshop. Or their studio, and you'd say, "Well, I want that one, and I want put a two on it," and then it would have the name of the business yeah. kind of at the bottom of it. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, so these were the stock design, yeah, and then you yeah, added exactly the exactly. specific information. 
And I guess these could have been translated onto tin. That's very I, likely. Uh, yeah, I, I guess. Or maybe were, wood, but I would think yeah. tin just for durability. And the period, maybe that was, yeah. That yeah was I've seen tin signs of that format with very similar graphics and the same, you know, it was usually just a few miles to whatever. I would say, what do you think they would maybe date to maybe the the images date to maybe the 20s or so? Yeah. Particularly because how the century. little girl, the little girl yeah. is dressed over there. Yeah, that bow with the, the, the mid the midline is a little later, because I was wondering if 1900, but yeah, probably yeah, the 20s. Yeah. And the, little girl there, she almost looks like a little Amish. Well, there was, there was a sunbonnet Sioux motif that was popular okay. in the 20s, okay. you know, maybe earlier. Here. Well, there's a door that Todd's showing now that you probably won't see many, but that, uh, somehow, like you said, that must have been inside, going from the back room to the main part of the store. We think it's all original. Valerie bought that yeah. in about 1984 or so at the Home in Indiana yep. show in Indianapolis, the Kramers. Sister to the Carter Country. Yeah, yeah exactly. And uh, she went up there. I didn't go with her. We had just kind of gotten started collecting Americana hmm. and folk art in the early 80s. <laughs> and uh, she loaded up this U-Haul trailer. She went up there and <laughs> we had just moved to the country yeah. from, from the city. And Our we home. wanted to furnish the home, our house, out on this horse property we own, and we wanted to furnish it in kind of early New England painted furniture and with folk art and accessories and so forth. So she went up there with this lady, that friend that she had, and she called me kind of in the middle of the night and said, well, she was leaving Illinois, and she was on her way home, and I said, well, what did you buy? And she said, so she told me some of the things she bought, but I particularly remember saying, well, I bought this door <laughs> and I said, door? What, what kind of door? She says, well, wait till you see it when I get home. And then, so she pulled it out. She pulled up to our place about 3 o'clock in the morning. The signs of the door. The signs, push. everything, the stenciling, it's all yeah. exactly the way it was. We hung it in our house in Texas, and it was a doorway kind of into the back, into where our bedroom and our little master suite was. Mm -hmm. And we had it hung. And the guy who hung it for us, it uh, he'd open and close it, and it kind of squeaked. And he wanted to kind of say, well, let me go out and get my my WD-40 WD or whatever. <laughs> and I says, no, 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 no. It, that's the, what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to squeak. squeak. Yeah. <laughs> so it's uh, we've owned this, I guess, this door for 35 years or so. Yeah. And uh, it's a pretty, pretty special kind of piece. Cool. Kind of neat piece of advertising. Cremo bread. Yeah, Paul's. And somehow some guy got a hold of us and said, I've got some shooting gallery stuff that you guys nice. may be interested in. It was in your neighborhood. <laughs> so I said, Well, where are you? Well, I'm in New Hampshire. I said, Well, that's where we are. <laughs> and so we made an appointment to go out to his place, and it was about I want to say it was about nine o'clock at night, and we go across kind of this open field with flashlights. <laughs> and he takes us, kind of opens the doors to this old kind of like 18th or 19th century typical wooden barn, Man. and he opens the doors and we line the flashlight down there. And this piece is laying there, <laughs> and I, together with some other stuff that I frankly don't remember what the other pieces were. Shooting but, gallery stuff. I think so, but yeah. I mean the rest of it wasn't worth. Yeah. You know, no, you don't even remember it. But yeah. when you see this, you go, "Oh my God!" You know, and uh, and uh, we we got it. We we took it as quickly as we could yeah. before he said, "Well, what's it worth?" Or well, yeah, changed his mind. You know. Yeah. You find something like that, you just yeah, you pay them whatever they say they want for it, yeah. and just get the hell out of dodge, <laughs> so to speak. But, I like his applied eye and, his, of course, his teeth and his tongue. His it's, teeth and his tongue, and it's, this is a Mankles piece, and, you know, yeah. so much of that Mankles stuff is just, it's humorous, the, the clowns and the cowboy, and, I mean, he had a way yeah. about it, and this piece is, it's not marked Mankles, and so we said, well, how do we know it's Mankles, and it kind of looked like Mankles. And sure enough, there's a Mankles catalog, and it shows this gallery, and it 
shows this, uh, there's a whale on it and stuff, it's kind of a nautical theme. And there's this, the head of this alligator or crocodile is sticking just up like he's getting ready, to, getting ready to jump at something. Yeah. Huh. Have you seen have you seen that one since? Have you seen No, this, this is the only I've never seen this. Never seen this one again. Anybody huh. ever had it. Yeah. And that's what What was this? Just part of the mounting? I guess it was, yeah. yeah. Um, it could have been on kind of I guess it even could have been some kind of a conveyor belt where it may have actually gone across like it was swimming with its head above it. Oh yeah, head. just barely like yeah. token. Yeah. Huh. And so much of this stuff, Dirk, was made um, where it's, it's, it faces left or faces right. Some of these ducks, mm -hmm. you'll have ducks to where the, the head's facing this way. Yep. The identical duck where the head's facing this way. And you could buy them. That's how they would conform them for whoever was running a shooting depending gallery, your, depending on what they wanted. Configuration. They could figure yeah. them the way you wanted them. Yeah. But that's just such an unbelievable thing. And we loved it here in this bathroom. Right. It's got good surface, great surface, yeah, great paint. Yeah. Would it have would that would it have chimed a metal? That would have been something. Yeah, that would have been. <clears> there would have been a clangor or a, right. or one of these uh, panging uh, gongs kind I of. I think in it's the back kind of a there. gong there that's gotten. Yeah, that's, it looks like it's become part of the mountain. But it's been back there. So it's been up in this bathroom for you know years. Yeah. Was, you know when Mangles did something up with the little birds and stuff. He did some really monumental pieces. And had a fun flair to them, which yeah. is part of the theme. Not, there's right. obviously the culture. Right. The, the, the humor to them. And yeah. The, the, the yeah, cool. All right. Well, that ought to do us, I think. I wonder how that thing comes off the wall. I think it's on a French cleat. <laughs> <laughs>